Okay, welcome to this week's session. Close that and we're going to look at the questions related to study unit six and seven, which is study unit six was the uh, normal distribution and study unit seven is your sampling distribution. So in terms of your both of these two study units, always remember you need to know the properties of one of them of normal distribution, what are the properties of normal distributions are that um, <clears throat> for the data to be standardized, um, it will have the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. And to standardize the data, we use the Z score. And the Z score for normal distribution, we use the X observation minus the population mean divided by the standard deviation. And that will just standardize the data that you have into a normally distributed um, data with each distributed with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. And also you need to remember the distribution um, in terms of the standard deviation when it's one standard deviation, when um, it is taller or flatter, all those things that you need to remember. Um, if your standard deviation is bigger, does that mean your normal distribution is narrower or it's flatter? Things like that. And when you change the the value of your mean, because remember the mean, it's on here, where the mean of zero is on here. If your um you increase or decrease the the mean of your data, you know that the um, the graph will shift from left to right. Increasing and decreasing your standard deviation tells you whether your uh, your standard uh, uh, your standard deviation uh, the bigger it is, the flatter your your graph. The smaller it is, the taller your graph will be, because when your standard deviation is smaller, therefore it means your your graph will be closer to the middle and it will be tall. So you just need to know all those. So the smaller your standard deviation, it means your um, your your distribution uh, will be taller. The bigger the standard deviation, your distribution will be near, um, flat, things like that. You need to know those properties. Also, not only knowing how to standardize your data, but to find the probability of that standardized data. And remember, when we find the probabilities, and this will apply also in the study unit seven, uh, to standard or to find the probabilities, if we calculate the standardized value of Z, if the value of Z is less than, so we need to find the probability that the value of Z is less than then we're going to find that probability on the table. Remember, we use the table value. If it is the probability of greater than a value, then we're going to say one minus the, the value we find on the table, because then we're talking about the bigger values. And remember, your, your normal distribution table has the negative and the positive side. Both of them are for the probability of less than a value. And if you need to find the probability that Z lies between two values, A and B, then you will have to go and find the probability of the second part, which is the probability of B minus the probability of A. So you will go to the table and find the probability of B first, and then subtract the probability of A second. And this is, is what we're going to apply just now when you go the questions. You must just remember that. Okay, so. Let's start answering the questions. 
which one of the following statement is incorrect? So we're looking for the incorrect statement with regards to the normal probability distribution. A, the standard normal distribution has the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. B, the area to the right of the mean of a standard, standard normal distribution is one and the area to the left of the mean of the standard normal distribution is also one. C, the score of the mean of a normal distribution is zero. G, 95.4% of the values of a random variable are within two standard deviation of the mean. And E, the smaller the value of your standard deviation, the narrower or the steeper the curve. Let me go back to uh, that because there is something that I didn't explain. When we talk about the probability, we're talking about the area underneath the curve. So we know that if we're talking about the area underneath the curve, and if in the middle, it splits the curve into 50% each way. On this side is your left, and this side is your right. And we're talking about the probability. We know that the probability will be the area underneath the curve. So we also know the properties of probabilities. It says the sum of all probabilities should always be equals to one. And therefore, if it means the area underneath all this, the area underneath the curve is equals to one, then it means the probability of the area of the curve is equals to one. If you look at the left hand side, therefore the probability on this side, your p value on this side, your probability value on this side will be 0 0.5, and the probability on this side will be 0 0.5 because 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, they both make up your probability of one. Also, you must remember the empirical rule. What does one standard deviation of the mean mean? Um, one standard deviation away from the mean mean? Um, is, does it mean a 95%? Two standard deviation, what does that mean? Three standard deviation, what does that mean? So you must remember those things. So remember that 68% refers to one standard deviation away from the mean. And 95% it's a two standard deviation and 99% is all or what we call three standard deviation away from the mean. You need to remember those empirical rules as well when we deal with normal distribution. Other than that, we should be able to answer all the questions on there based on the information that I just shared with you. So let's go. Which one of the statement is incorrect? A, B, C, D, O, E. B. B. I say B or D. B for Bravo. B, B for Bravo. B. B is the incorrect statement because all the other statements are true based on what I just explained to you. Okay, yeah, so consider the standard normal distribution Z. Which of the following probabilities is incorrect? We are looking for the incorrect uh, question or the incorrect one option on here. 
<clears throat> so A, it tells you that Z lies between two values. And remember, these are already standardized uh, distributions. So you don't have to go and calculate this, the Z value because they have calculated them. We just apply the rule that we, we learned. Remember, those are the rules that we have learned. We just apply them to answer these questions. It should be easy. So I'm going to go to the table. We'll do each statement together uh, using the table. And then the next one, I will ask you to do it on your own. So the first one, it says the probability of uh, Z lies between minus 2.8 and zero. So it means we need to go to the table and look for the probability of Z less than 0 0.00 on the table minus the probability of Z less than minus 2.80. The reason why I'm keeping the two decimals it's because on the table, we're going to look for, remember the table looks like this, we're going to look for the two values, the one before the comma and the, uh, let's say it's 0, 0, on your left-hand side. And at the top, you're going to look at the last digit um, at the top. So in order for us to get it right, we are going to do that. So in terms of the 0, 0, 0, so it means the last digit at the top here will be 0, 0, 0, 0, right? So let's go to the table. Just need to go to the table. Uh, you cannot answer these questions without having the tables. And remember, the tables has the positive and the negative. So you have the positive, the negative side, and you also have the positive side. So our question, in terms of what we're looking for, there are it's a positive zero comma zero zero. So we go to the positive side, and we look for zero comma zero zero. So we look for zero zero on the left, and the last digit at the top and where they both meet, that is the value that we are looking for. So our first value is 0, 5,000. So therefore it's 0, 5,000. Subtract, we need to go to the negative side and look for minus 2.80. So we go to the negative side and we're going to look for minus 2.80. So it means we're going to look for negative 2.8 on the left. And at the top, we're looking for zero where they both meet. That is the value that we are looking for, which is 0, 0.0026 minus 0, 0.0026. Then you do your math. Your, your calculations, the answer will be 0 0.5, 0 0.5 thousand minus 0 0.0026, which is equals to 0 0.4974, which is correct looking for the incorrect one. Then we continue. Do the same. I'm not going to do it with you. You're going to do it and you tell me the values. So you're going to look for the probability. We start with the second one first. Z less than 2.10 minus the probability that Z is less than 0 0.0 0. So go to the positive side of the table and look for 2.10 and tell me what is the value. 
So I expect everyone to have the tables because I did share the table with everyone and the tables are part of the notes. Um, the table is under statistical tables. You should have downloaded them and have them ready on your PC somewhere where you are able to reference them. If you have facilities where you can print them, it's e even easier and best way is to have them printed and have them with you. So what is the probability of Z less than 2.10? Nobody. I'm thinking it's 0 0.98. Okay, we can double check that. So we're Nine looking eight for 2.10. So you go to the positive side on the probability table and you look for 2.1 and you look for zero, zero at the top, and the probability is 0 0.9821. 0 0.9821 minus the probability of zero, zero, we did find it, it was 0, 000, 0, 0, 0.50, Zero, zero. So calculate, does it give you 0, 0,9, uh, 0, 0,42, 2, 1? And the answer is 0, 0,4821. So this is incorrect. the incorrect one. Okay, I'm just going to continue so that you can practice, right? So let's look at C. You see on your own, see if you can get it right. Sorry, Lizzie, I have a question. Uh -huh. um, if the probability of Z is smaller than 2.1, and we find 2.1 on the Z value, um, where do we find, I'm assuming we use minus 2.8 as the column value, I'm not sure. What, are you doing it the same way as we have been doing it? I've been trying to use. <laughs> because the first part is it's 2.1, right? We already yeah. have that probability. The second part is minus 2.8. We did find it in the first. We did go find the probability in the first A question, right? This is the same. Uh, I see. So you just use the values. But you need to write the formula correctly so that you are able to get the right answer. Thank you. 
Are you winning? I got the correct answer, yes. Okay, so the first thing you do is the probability of Z less than 2.10 minus the probability of Z less than minus 2.80. What was the probability of Z less than 2.10? 0 0.9821. 9821 minus the probability of minus 2.80. 0 0.500. Nope. It's 0. 0.0026. 0026. Subtract one from the other, and the answer should be 0. 0.97. Nine five. Nine five, because that is correct. Now, when we get to D, D says find the probability that Z is greater than or equals to minus 2.8, which is the same as the probability of 1 minus the probability of Z greater than 2.8. This one, they want you to validate that the left-hand side is the same as the right-hand side. So let's check. What is the left hand side? What is the probability of Z less than or Z greater than? The probability of Z greater than or equals to minus 2.8, and I'm going to put zero there, is the same as one minus because the rule says, what does the rule say? If it's the greater than, then we're going to find the value from uh, by subtracting the value on the table from 1. So we do that. 1 minus the table value and the table value of minus 2.80. What is the table value for minus 2.80? Was 0, 0, 0, 0.0026 because that's the value that we've been getting all along. And the answer here is 1 minus that. What does it give you? One minus point zero zero two six is equals to zero comma nine nine seven. Zero comma nine nine seven four. That is this part. Let's check if it's the same as the second part. So the second part says we need to find the probability. So the second part says uh, one minus. Don't get confused with this. 1 minus the probability that Z is greater than 2.8, and I'm going to put 0 at the end. Now, because uh, whether we put greater than or greater than or equals to for the normal distribution and sampling distribution, they mean one and the same thing. They will not change how you find the data. So, because this says it's greater than, then it means we need to say 1 minus the table value. So this will be 1 minus. We need to change the second part to 1. I'm going to put it into bracket. 1 minus the table value. What is the table value of 2.80? We don't have that because previously we worked with minus 2.8. So we need to go to the table value in the posit on the positive side we look for 2.8 0 which is 0, 0,9974 so we go there and we say 0, 0,9974 we're not done yet 1 minus what is the answer 1 minus 0, 0,74 is 0, 0,0026. And 1 minus 0, 0,0026 is the same as 0, 0,9974. Are the two answers correct? Uh, the same? So the left hand side. 
is yes. the left hand yes. side equals the right hand side? Yes. If they yes. are correct, if they are equal, therefore that statement is correct. Mm -hmm. That's how you check. Let's look at number E. E says the probability of Z less than minus 2.1 is equals to the probability of Z greater than or equals to 2.1. You also need to validate those two statements. Let's do that. Let's check the left-hand side. What is the answer for the left-hand side? The left-hand side says the probability of Z less than minus 2.10. So it means we need to go to the table because it's a less than, right? Less than or equals to is the less than. The rule says if it's a less than, the value you find on the table is your probability. So let's go to minus 2.1. Go to the negative side of the table. Look for 2.1, zero. The answer is 0, 0,0179, right? 0, 0,0179. That is the left hand side. Let's check the right hand side. The right hand side says we need to find the probability that Z is greater than or equals to 2.10. It's on the positive side, but it says greater than. So we need to find 1 minus the value we find on the table. So let's go to the table and look for 2.10. We've been finding it. We know what that is. It's 0, 0,9821. Remember? 2.10. We did find it. It's 0, 0,9821. Yeah. So we go and find 0, 0,9821. And do the maths. What is the answer? Zero comma zero one seven nine. So that's your left hand side equals your right hand side. They do because they are both zero comma one seven nine and this side is zero comma zero one seven nine. So that is correct. And that's how you're going to validate your answers or check whether the statements are correct or incorrect. Are you lost? Do, 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 or is it clearer? And Lizzie, I have one question. Mm -hmm. When we're looking for, uh, for instance, uh, minus 0.21, uh, 2.8, right at the top, the first one, how do we know that the column from the top is zero and not 0 0.01 or 0 0.02? Okay, it's because you need to keep two decimals, right? If I have 1,1 1, 1, is the same as I can write it as 1,1 1, 1 and 0 at the end. Okay. If I have two, if they give you two decimal, right? If they give you two decimal, it will be one comma one one, and you will know that the last digit is one. You need to go and find one. So if they only gave you one decimal, you just put a zero, because one comma one zero is the same as one comma one. If we drop the zero. I hear you. Okay. Yeah. So only they give us another decimal do we use the across the columns. Otherwise yes. it's always the zero. Okay. Yes. If they if they give you another value, so the, let's say they give you two point my pen, what does it do? If they give you two point two eight as the the Z value. Yeah. They gave you two decimals, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that these are the these are the 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 values you're going to find on the left hand side, mm -hmm. and the last digit is the one that you're going to find at the top. Okay. 
Okay. So you're just going to go here. There is only two decimals and the last digit will be. So always remember that for Z, you only need two decimals. Even when you are, you are calculating it yourself, the Z score, remember to always keep it to two decimals. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the next That's question. one more question, Lizzie. Yes. So every time the uh, with the number that you got from a table is a minus sign, you must uh, minus by a one, a nope. positive one. Nope. Remember, when you apply this rule, if the question says less than, regardless of whether the answer of A is minus or positive, it's negative or positive, the sign less than tells you the value you see on the table, that's the value you are looking for. If it's greater than, this is the sign that you will look for. If the question says greater than, then you're going to take the value from the table and subtract it from one. If it is between, if it has two of them, it says between whether there is an equal sign or not equal sign underneath. But as long as it says it's between two values, remember to find the table value of the second one first, then the table value of the second or of the first one and subtract the second or the first one from the second like that. Oh, and that is what this is the basic thing that you can do the shortcut way you can use to answer the questions especially from normal distribution and sampling distribution always remember this this should be somewhere where you can always remember and refer and, and use it okay One so let's look at question three it says given that Z is a standard normal distribution. What is the value of Z such that the area between your negative Z value and your positive Z value is 0, 0,2358? That is the probability of Z lying between two values. Let us zoom those two values. It's take Take Z, negative Z as A and positive Z as B. Take it as such. If you think about it in that way, you won't get anything wrong because it says the probability that Z is between A and B is 0, 0,2358. What is that probability or, or what is the Z value? That is what we are looking for. We need to find that Z value, the small Z value. What is the value of Z such that the area between the Z negative side and the Z between the positive side is zero comma Two, three. So ask yourself this question. If they say that, therefore, it means we need to find or oh, how they got the 0, 0,238 is by saying the probability of Z less than the positive Z minus the probability of Z less than the negative Z. All what we want to know is what is the value of this Z? such that that value of Z, when we go find them on the table, what is that value of Z? That when we find that value on the table and we subtract this value on the positive side and the value on the negative side, we get, we get zero comma, what do we get? Two, zero comma two, three, five, eight.
stop, which is very, very difficult to find because your negative and positive Z values should be almost similar to one another because one should be positive and the other one should be negative. Uh, so let's check. So we can use these values that we have here to check if those gives us the right value. So the first step that we can check is if our Z positive, this side, is 0, 0,12. This side should be minus 0, 0,12. So let's go check that when we subtract one from the other, we get 0, 0,2358. Let's go. What are we looking for? 0, 0,12. So we go here, we look for 0, comma, or not 1, comma, 0, comma, 1. Let's remove all the, the ink that we have. Sorry, Lizzie, where did you get 0, comma, 1, 2? Ah, from the options. We're going to validate each option oh, that see. is here. Oh, okay. To see if we get that answer there. So we take all these options because they say the value of Z is either one of these values. So let's check if it's one of those values. So 0, 0,12, 0, 0,1, and then 2 at the top is 0, 0,5478. 0, 0,5478 minus, and we go to the negative side, and we look for 0, 0,1, 0, 1, 2, and that will be, because I know that at the top there it's 2, 0, 0,4522. So let's take our calculator and calculate and see if we get that answer. 0. 0.5478. Uh, point 0.5478 minus 0. 0.4522 equals. Nope. That is not the correct one. Moving on to the next one. So. That is not the answer we are looking for. I'm going to change that to the next one. Let's go to the next one. 0 0.58. 0 0.58 minus 0 0.58. Go to the positive side. Look for the probability. 0 0.58 is the second last column. 0 0.7190. 0 0.7190 minus, we go to the negative side, we look for 0 0.58. Negative 0 0.5, second last column, which is 0 0.2810. 0 0.28. 1, 0. Take our calculator. Let's calculate. 0. 0.7190 0. minus 0. 0.2810. 0. 0.43. Nope. That is not the answer. We're looking for 0, 0.2358. So that is not the answer. Moving on. With that, let's go to the next one. The next one is 0, 0,82. 0, 0,82 minus 0, 0,82. We need to validate each one of them to see if it gives us the answer. Okay. 
go into the positive side. You remove all the inks that we have here. 0, 0,82. It's 0, 0,7939. 0, 0,7939 minus, we go to the negative side. Also remove the ink. 0, 0,82. 0, 0,012. 0, 0, 2061. 0, 2061. Take our calculator. Let's calculate 0 0.7939 minus 0 0.2061. Let's hope this is the answer we get. No, it's not. So we move on to the next one. 0 0.62. This. And replace our Z value with 0 0.62. 0 0.62. 0 0.62. Going to the positive side of the table, looking for 0 0.62, which is 0 0.26. Uh, I'm on the wrong side. We need to start this side first. 0 0.62 is 0 0.7324. 7324. 0 0.7324 minus, go to the negative side of the table, we look for 0 0.2676. 0 0.2676. 0 0.2676. And let's calculate. 0 0.7324 minus. 0.2676 equals 0 0.4648. It is not correct. Right. The last one. Uh, I hope this was the correct options that they gave here. Because the last one, if it's not correct, then it means they did didn't give us the correct option. Okay, so let's see. Uh, the 0 0.30 and minus 0 0.30. So we go to the positive side and look for 0 0.30, which is 0 0.6179. 6179. 0 0.61. Seven nine. Did I write it right? Seven one six nine. Seven one six nine. Minus. We go to the negative side. We look for zero point three zero zero point three eight two one zero point three eight two one. Let's take out our calculator and calculate zero point six one seven nine. Minus 0 0.3821 to one and equals. Yay! Oh gosh. The right answer is 0 0.30. How is that value? Is 0 0.30. Happiness? And Lizzie, the answer is 0 0.2358. How did we round it off to 0.3? What do you mean 2.3? The answer is 0 0.2358, which is the same as the answer that we have there, because they say the probability that Z lies between negative 0 0.30. Uh, I see what you <laughs> 
Okay. So this says the probability that Z lies between negative 0 0.30 and 0 0.30 is 0, 0,235. Thank you. It's 0, 0,2358. That's what we proved. And that's what we were proving. So you need to also think outside of the box. Sometimes they might not give you the probability of that, but they might give you Z. They might say, find the probability on the right or on the left. If the left is this much, what will be the probability on the right? Right? So you just need to also make sure that you, you think outside of the box by remembering to apply this because the probability to the left which is less than is to the left. The probability to the right, which is greater than, how do you find it? And the probability of the T, how do you find it? You need to think outside of the box, especially when it comes to this kind of questions. Okay. Consider a normal random variable with the mean of 3,000 and a standard deviation of 1,000. So they have given you the mean and they have given you the standard deviation. Calculate the probability that the random variable is at most. What is at most? Less what is at most? Less than equal to. It's less than equals to 3,800. So because it's less than or equals to, so we're calculating the probability, then it means that we're going to use the formula, the probability of Z less than A. The value we find on the table will be our answer. Choose the correct answer from the list of options below. So let's go and calculate the probability that X is less than or equals to 3,800. And because this is your data, we need to standardize that data by using the formula. Our Z distribution will be Z less than or equals to we're going to distribute or standardize our X value by using our Z normal distribution formula. So let's standardize that. The probability that Z is less than or equals to our X is what we are given. It's 3,800 minus your population mean I just gave you is 3,000 divided by the standard deviation, it's 1,200. Probability that Z is less than or equal to in the calculation, what do you get? Zero comma six six. 0, 0,66. Let's double check. Three eight zero zero minus three thousand divided by one thousand two hundred equals zero comma six six seven. You need to make sure that you round off correctly as well, right? So the answer will be in two decibels, 0, 0,67, because the number to the right of where we went to the round of two is bigger than five, which is six. So we need to add one to six. So it will be 0, 0,67. What do we need to do now? 
need to go to the table. You go to the table. Positive or negative? We're going to the positive side. We're going to look for 0, 0,6 and 7 at the top. And where they meet, that is the answer we are looking for. 0, 0,7486. Option C. If here they said at least, we would have taken this value and subtracted from one. Because it's at most, you just go to the table value and the value we find, that is the answer. Okay. Moving on, unless if there is a question. No questions. Let's move on to question five. The Department of Basic Education found that learners travel time from home to school at one of the remote rural schools is normally distributed with the mean of 114. And the standard deviation of 72. What is the probability that the learner's travel time from school is between 120 and 180? So now you need to think, because it says it's between, so you're going to apply the between rule. The between rule which says the value I find on the table for B minus the value I find on the table for A. So you do the same. So let's standardize this. It says it's between 120 and 108. So if we need to standardize this, our formula will be x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation so we do for the 121st which is 120 minus the mean is 114 divided by the standard deviation of 72 and 180 minus 114 divided by 72. You need to calculate and give me the answers. So the first one on the other side is 120 minus 114. Divide by 72. What is the answer? Those who are using a sharp calculator, because if it does not have the fraction like I have it, always say 120 minus 114 equal divide by the 72 equal. Don't just put 120 minus 114 divided by 72. What it will do is it will apply the Botmas rule. It will do Botmas. And Botmas says division before addition and subtraction. What it will do, it will take 114 and divide it by 72, which is not what you want. You want the answer of 120 minus 114 to be divided by 72. So always use the equal sign. The top part equal, divided by, the bottom part equal. Those who are using the sharp calculator and you have the fraction functionality, you use that, which makes it easy. What is the answer for the first one? 120 minus 114 divided by 72. 
0.08. Remember to keep it to two decibels. So it will be 0, 0.08. The number to the right of 8 is 3. So we don't have to do anything to 8. So you will have 0, 0.08. And do the same on the other side. It's 180. What do you get? Zero comma nine. Zero point nine. And that zero is yes. that will be zero, zero point nine two. Round off correctly. The smallest mistake you make in the rounding off, you will not get the answer because you will be using a different number. So make sure that you know how to round off. So the number to the right of one is more than five. So because it's bigger than or equals to five, we add one to, to one. So you will have nine two. So the answer is zero point nine two. You need to also make sure that you know how to round off. So now let's apply the rule that we know. So we need to find the probability that Z is less than 0, 0,92 and subtract the probability that Z is less than 0, 0,08. So let's go to the table and look for 0, 0,92. On the positive side, they both on the positive side. So we look. It, so I'm just gonna write both of the numbers here, and you look for the numbers, especially those with no uh, statistical tables. Zero comma nine two and zero comma zero eight. Those are the two values of Z that we are looking for. It's all Write them down. And then you will give them to me when we go to the next page to the presentation. Do you have them? Are you good? Yes. The, the first one is 0, 0,9 and 2, which means it is this value. The second one is 0, 0, 0, 0,008, which is that value. So you should have two values written down 0, 0,8212 and 0, 0,5319. So the first one is 0, 0,8212 minus 0, 0,5319. Do the subtraction one from the other. What is the answer that you get? Negative is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Make sure that you also check your numbers yeah, when you write them down. All right. Lizzie, yes. I'm getting confused on, I think it's step three, where you swap the 0 0.9 to around with the 0 0.08. Okay, do what does minus. the Wait, what does the rule say? 
the probability of z smaller than b minus the probability of z smaller than a. So if we take the step number three and we apply that. So is the front one always a? So 0 0.08 is a and 0 0.92 b. And then when I apply the formula, I take b. Yes. So you will take the second one first and then the first one. Yes, yeah, so I must remember that a and b. Because yes. it's the exact same sum between a and b. I don't know what the difference is. 120 minus 118, 180 minus 118. Okay, I see. So the first number literally is A, and the second and the bigger one is B. Yes, so this is your A, and this is your B. Yes, all right. Thanks, Thanks Lizzie. Okay, consider again, blah, 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 the same story, the mean and the standard deviation. An education consultant has recommended no more than a certain minute of learners travel to school. If the department would like to ensure that 18.67 of the learners, percent of the learners adhere to the recommendation, what is the recommended, recommended travel time? So here they gave you the probability. But you also need to be very careful about this because it says no more than. What does more than mean? More than means greater than. A no more than will mean a less than or equal, right? Because it's the opposite of norm of more than. So if they say no more than, then it means less than the values, right? Are we agree? Yes, we agree. Okay. So then it means this probability that they gave you is the probability that Z of a value that we are looking for of a less than or equal because it says no more than of 0, 0,1867. So it means if we want to know what is this value of A, right? That is what we want to know. In order for us to know what is this value of A, we need to go to the table. And go to the table. We know what do we know about the less than values? So, if the rule says for any value less than, that's the table value, and we know that this is the less than value, and it was 0, 0,1867, it's a table value, we can use that to go and get the z value. So let's go get the Z value. There is nothing we need to do. We do not have to even subtract from one or do anything. You just take the value as you see it, go to the table because it's the probability of a less than. Because the sign says less than. So we can go and find what the value of A is. So what is the value of A? We go to because the probability is small. So we'll go to the negative side and inside this, we need to look for 0, 0, 0,1867 inside here. Look for 0, 0,1867. Did you find it? Did you find it? I already found it. But I'm asking if you guys have found it. It's under negative zero comma eight. 
Hmm? Negative 0, 0,8 on the last column. The last column is 0, 0,9. Yes. So here is the value that we are looking for. So write out what is the Z value that correspond with this value. Go read out. First read this value here. And read that value there. What is the answer that you get? It's minus 0, 0,8. Nine, because the last column is nine, right? Don't forget to write the last digit. You take those two digits plus the last digit, and that is your your z, which is zero minus zero comma eight nine. Now, because we now know this value of a, we can. Now calculate because we know that Z, let me write it up here. Z is equals to X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. We know that the Z value is minus 0, 0,89 equals because what we are looking for, we're looking for the X value which is our travel type, minus the mean of 114, divided by the standard deviation of 72. Let's apply math, multiply. We're going to, I'm gonna take it up here. We're going to multiply minus 0, 0,89, multiply by 0, comma not zero comma, multiply by 72 is equal to X minus 114. And X will be equals to minus zero comma eight nine times 72 plus 114. If I apply meds, right? We multiply and we take 114 to the other side. And the answer we get negative 0.89 multiplied by 0.72 equals plus 114 equals the recommended travel time is one one three did, did i calculate the right let's make sure that we calculate the right Negative point eight nine times seventy two equals plus one one four forty nine point two. If we estimate it when we round it off to exact minutes. 50. X is equals to 50. So the approximate or the recommended travel type is 50. The recommended travel time will be 50. Okay, do you understand the process? Is it clearer? Is yes. It easier? Uh -huh. Okay. Cool. 
Okay. Moving right. on. Two questions. Right there. Unless if there is a question. Right. You are not with us. Uh, mute. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to question seven. The emotional quotient score, which is EQ, of high school learners is normally distributed with the mean of 80 and the standard deviation of 20. If they were 4,601 oh, 4, learners, which is N, with the high score higher than, with the score higher than 91, higher than means greater than 91, how many students took the test? Okay, so that is not N, because these are how many, these are students who got higher than. So we're going to call the student X. So I always tackle questions like this in a way that if I know how many students, which is N, which is what we need to be calculating, it should be equals to X plus Y because X will be those who scored higher than 91 and Y will be those who scored less than 91. So if I can find out how many students scored. Uh, if I know, I know that X is 4,601, right? What I don't know is those ones, the Y, and I don't know how many of them. Those are the two things that I don't know. But, what I know is I can use this information to calculate the proportions because what do we know? So that is one thing that we know. We know that X plus Y should give us N, but we also know that the sum of all probabilities should be equals to one. So one should be the same as the probability of those who scored greater than 91 plus the probability of those who scored less than 91 should give me one. So if I know those proportion of those students, then I can calculate how many students took the test. Because I would know the proportion of uh, what proportion is 4,601 which will give me the rest of the other proportion because one minus the proportion of the other will give me, so if I know the proportion of those students who scored greater than 91, which will be one minus the proportion, oh sorry, of those students who scored less than 91, then I can calculate the, number, the rest of the students. I can know how many students are there in total, right? It should, it should give me that. Okay, so now let's do that. Let's first calculate and find the proportion of students who scored more than 91. So I'm gonna write it here from the bottom, from this side. The, those who scored greater than 91, they are how they will be one minus the proportion. Oh, why am I doing one minus as yet? I should not be applying one minus. I must just continue and answer the question. So let's standardize it. Z of greater than X minus the proportion. Our X, 91. This X that I'm using here is not the same as this X. This I could have used P and, and, and Z anyway. Minus our mean, 
set the mean is 80. Divide by the standard deviation of 20. Is that greater than what is the great uh, 91 minus 80 divided by 20? One minus 80 divided by 20. The answer is 0 0.55, Lizzie. 0 0.55. Now Lizzie, let's can, sorry, Lizzie, can you show us how you do the divide on the calculator on the Casio? I'm trying to press shift, but I'm not quite getting it. No, you can't press shift. It's this function. You just press the function. Oh. You have this function on your calculator. Yes. Yes, you just press that button. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So we need to say one minus, we need to go to the table value and find 0 0.55. You go to the positive side and look for 0 0.55. Zero comma five five where they both meet zero comma seven zero eight eight right zero comma seven zero eight eight did I write it right? which is equals to 0, 0,2912. 0, 0,2912. So we know that roughly almost 29% of the students made up the entire student body. Right. So now, what we must do is the following. If we go back to what we had before, before I confused everything else, in a way, we know that one is equals to 0 0.29, if, I'm, if I may use the same logic, 29, one, two, plus the alternative will be to make up 100 will be one minus 0 0.29, which is 0 0.7088, which is the same thing that we have here. That is what we have here, right? 0 0.2912, which is the probability of Z greater than 129, is the same as one minus the probability of 0 0.78, which is this part. Or I can rewrite it here in that manner instead of writing it the way I'm writing it so that then it makes sense to you. So what we said is this is 0 0.2912, which is the same as one minus 0 0.7088. That's what we calculated here on this, it is the same thing, one and the same thing. Can you see that it brought me back to the equation that I wrote earlier? So which makes it easier because I know that 29% makes up 46,000. So what will the rest, what will be the rest? What make, makes up the rest of the student vote? So that we've got, 
two ways of calculating this. So we can say what is uh, if I if I know okay, let's go back to this this side of things. I'm I'm gonna confuse you even more with all the formulas that I'm gonna write right now because there are many ways of answering this. But I'm trying to get to a point where we can. So if x is equals to if x is equals to four six zero one. Actually, our x, we know what x is. Sorry, my bad. X is 4, 6, 0, 1. If we know that that is the same as 0, 2912, and we need to know what y is because x, we know we have x, right? But we don't have y. We know that y, the proportion of y, is 0, 0,7088. So let's find y. So in order for us to find y, we're going to cross multiply. And we're going to divide. So this will multiply that and this will multiply that. So you will end up having 4,601 multiplied by 0, 0,7088. 088 is equals to 0, 0,2912 multiplied by y. But we need to divide by 0, 0,2912 on both sides as well. 0, 0,2912. So that this and this will cancel. And you will be left with y. So. Let us calculate what the value of y will be. So y will be equals to, we use the formula on the right, on the left, sorry, which is 4,601 times 0.7088 divided by 0.2912 equals that gives us the value of y which is hundred and eleven point yeah eleven thousand nine nine i'm just gonna also use the decimals or we can write it off to to that we can leave it as that because if these are people people cannot be in decimal format so we can keep it as 111,999. Uh, 11, so that is our y. So if we know what our y is, we can go back to our formula. Plus, remember, we can just add 11199. Add them together, that will give you the value of n. So n is. 4601 is equals to 1580. 15,800, that will be the number of students. So from yeah. here to there to here to there. Like I said, uh, I'm going to write so many equations that is going to confuse you. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so let's recap <laughs> on what we did. In the beginning, in order for me to explain where we're going, I needed to give you the formula, right? That's what I wrote. I said the total number of students will be those who got higher than 91 and those who got less than 91. And I went on and I wrote it in terms of probabilities because I know that that is what we're going to be using to calculate. <laughs> I said, in order for us to get this, we're going to have eventually 
calculate the proportions. And for us to get the proportions, we know that those who, the proportion of those who got 91% and those who got less than 91% will always give us one. Because in a way, that's how probabilities work. Right? And I said, then it means the proportion of those who got nine, more than 90% will be one minus the probability of those who got less than 90, 91%. Right. And that is the basic thing that I started with explaining. Then I said, okay, now, because on the statement itself, they gave us enough information for us to calculate the proportion of those who got higher than 91. And that's what we calculated. We said, let's go back and calculate the proportion of those who got higher than 91. And we calculated that proportion and we found that it is 0 0.2912, right? These are those who got more than 91 and we use this formula. And I said, Let's reflect on this formula based on our original statement that we had. We went back to the original statement because in a way, when you calculate the proportion of those who got more than 91, you will end up having to go to the table where you have to find the probability on the table and minus it from one, which will give you the proportion of those who got more than 91. And I said, if I rewrite this formula, only this bit, which gave us the answer that we were looking for in terms of the proportion, it answers the question that we started with from this statement here. Because we know that the proportion of those who got 91, it's 0 0.29. And we know that the complement of it is one minus the proportion of those who got less than and which is the same as what we got here. And I just wrote it there as a formula. But that is not the question that they are asking. They want to know how many students took the test. So if we know that X amount of students wrote the test and they got more than 91 and they told us those X amount are 4,600. We already know those ones and we know their proportion. So 4,601 students is equal to 0 0.2912 because those are the proportion. The number is equivalent to the proportion. What we don't have is those who got less than 91%. But we know the proportion of them. We know that the proportion of those who got less than 91 is 0, 0,78 because that is the formula we wrote there, right? It tells us that the pro probability of X less than 91 is 0, 0,72, regardless of this one minus, because one minus the probability that gives us the probability of those who got more than. So since we know that 0 0.7088 or 70.88% of the learners or the students received less than 91%, we can calculate what the value of Y is. And we went and we said, if we don't know, if Y is unknown, but we know the proportion and we can write the formula as such because these are those who got more than 91. At the bottom are those who got less than 91. And then we apply the maths. Maths says in order for us to solve for Y, we cross multiply. And when we cross multiply, it means 4,601 multiplied by 0, 0.7088 will multiply, will be equals to the cross multiplication of Y times 0, 0.2912. And that's what we did. And in order for us to get rid of 0, 0.2912, we need to divide both sides. Whatever you do on the left, you must do on the right so that we are left with Y on its own. So on the right-hand side, 
0.2912 will cancel out. And on the other side, we just simplify and do the calculation. 4,601 times 0, 0.7088 divided by 0, 0.2912 is equals to 11,199. And these are the number of students who received less than 91. If we add those who received, because they told us that there are 4,601 who received more than, if we add them together, they will give us the number of students who wrote the test. Oh. It's a long calculation, but you can, you get it, you can get it. There might be another easy way of answering the same question. Um, but in a nutshell, these are the um, simplest. For me, this is the simplest way of answering this question. Okay, so moving on to question eight. A random sample of size 120, which when they start talking about sample size, so we're talking about N, is drawn from a normally distributed population with the mean of 160. So you just need to know that that is the mean. And the standard deviation, and that is your standard deviation, Determine the standard error, and that is another thing that you need to always remember. The standard error is one of those measures that you calculate from the sampling distribution. And here they're asking you to calculate the standard error of the mean and choose the correct answer from the list below. So we know that the standard error, which is the sampling distribution, uh, the sampling standard deviation of sampling mean of sampled means is given by the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. You need to know the formulas. So calculate. Standard deviation is 50. The square root of n, n is 120. What is the answer? Anyone? It's four comma five six. And the answer is or oh, comma five six, which is option C. Is it right? Right for what and easy. You must always remember that standard error is the same as standard deviation of Sampling distribution of sampled means or proportions, because it can be for the proportion as well. That's the standard error. Another another meaning of standard error. Okay, now consider a normally distributed population with the mean of 990 and the standard deviation of 120 with a sample size of 50 and is drawn from the population. What is the probability that a sample mean is 220 at 
most. So there are a couple of things that you need to identify from here. They have given you the mean, they've given you the standard deviation, they've given you the sample size, and they've given you the sampled mean, and they're asking you at most, what is at most? We have been doing at most the whole thing. I'm just gonna write it, it's less than a week. They are asking you to calculate the probability that the sampled mean is less than or equals to 220. So because this is sampling distribution um, question, you need to standardize the sampling distribution by using Z of less than the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error, which is the sampling distribution over the standard deviation over the square root of n. We go ahead and calculate z less than or equals to our sampled mean is in the question, which is 20, 220 minus the mean of 190 divide by the standard deviation of 120 divided by the square root of 50. Need to do the calculation. 220 minus 190 divide by 120 divided by the square root of 50. Do we have an answer? 1,77. And the answer is 1,77. And what do we need to do? Go find the answer we are looking for. We're looking for the probability. That's the question. What's the next step? This is similar to what we have been doing the whole session. What's the next step? How do we find the probability? It doesn't mean because we are now using a different formula than, than everything we learned the pre in the last one hour, 30 minutes. We forget about that. So where do we go? to the table on the positive side of the table and look for 1,77. 1,7 and 7. Where they both meet, that's the answer that we are looking for, which is 0, 0,9616 because also we're looking at the probability of Z less than A, which then it means the value we find on the table, that's the value we are looking for. Lizzie, can you help me with that sum on my calculator, the Casio? The 120 minus 190 over 120 over square root of 50. Okay, so you go and you first press your first fraction button. And you put 220. Um, sorry, Lizzie, that's where I'm getting stuck. I'm pressing the function, the but it's not it, it's not doing what you're it doesn't have no. the wait. You press the first function. That's what I'm trying to get to get you to be able to do the same thing. So press your first function. Is that shift? No. Just the button, the fraction oh. button. Just okay. press the fraction button. Okay. And then press 220 minus 
190. Okay. And you should have a but uh, the block at the bottom still a block at the bottom. No, it's not there. Did you press the fraction button? You need to have okay. Look at my screen. I'm pressing mm -hmm. the fraction button. You need to your fraction button should look like this on your screen. But it's it's not showing that. I don't know. Um, at the top, press the mode function. Oh, okay, mode. And then press one. One. And your calculator should be back to state mode, to math mode. And then press the fraction button. Okay, now it's there. Yes, and then so press. Go to mode. Mode and one. Okay. So Thank press. You. Press 220. Okay, so 220 minus 190. 190. Yes. And then use your arrow to go down, the down arrow. Um, and when you get to the block at the bottom, press again your fraction button and it will create another fraction. Okay. And then we press 120 and then you press the down arrow. And then press the square root function, which is next to the fraction button. Okay. And then press 50. Okay. And once you are done, then press equal sign. And you will see that your calculator will still have the set. You mm -hmm. just press the S and D, the S with an arrow and a D button, and it will change to decimals. Oh, okay, there's 1.76. You said the last one, the last step is what you're pressing, what is it? The S, S, arrow, and D button. S, arrow, and D button, okay. That will change your, your five times the square root of two divided by four to a decimal. I can't okay. the Thanks, Lizzie. No problem. Uh, I see here uh, we have five minutes and there are a couple of questions. We can continue with them tomorrow. Tomorrow is Monday. Yes, tomorrow. We will do question nine, question 11, question 12, 13. And then we will be done with this. And then we start with a revision of study unit eight and nine. Are there any questions? No. There are no questions. Then we can stop right here. And say goodbye. I'll stop the recording. Have a lovely evening and see you tomorrow. Thanks, Lizzie. Have a lovely birthday, further. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. 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 Good evening.